Hey, thank you for being here and thank you for asking me uh, to come. Uh, uh, we're just old country gals and boys uh, in our company that kind of uh, were interested in help for our grandchildren and um, our grass fed beef. And one thing led to another, and all of a sudden we were working with soil biology and uh, just running and gunning, and things, good things were happening. Uh, I want to tell you that one of the people I've worked with on projects, Emily back there, raise your hand. She's at the um, uh, um, Arboretum now, uh, but she was in, we worked on the Bush Library together, and, um, and she did all the seeds and that sort of thing. So uh, uh, that was pretty exciting. Uh, so uh, you can chime in whenever you want to. We, we did a lot of experimenting up there. But really what we're talking about is microbes in the prairie, uh, and it's a different way to do it. Feel free to call me dumb. Feel free to call me uh, stupid. People have. Uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, really what we want when we're doing all of this is we want landscapes to be vibrant, full of life, and pleasing to the eye, teeming with life everywhere. Now, you've got to remember, though, that these are uh, paintbrushes, and they are um, uh, parasitic. And they're taking out the other guys. There's a war going on out there. And we're going to let everybody speak their piece and everybody do their thing. And we'll learn kind of how to manage them and how they're all working together. And we want prairie plants rather than improved plants. Now, we can do Bermuda grass. Goodness. That's on the river, Bosque River. Wrong place for Bermuda, even if you were going to do it. But this is what we're doing up in the granite country. Uh, over by Mason, and it's just, just come alive, come alive. We put that old biology out there, and that stuff just went Phew! Now, they're not grazing it hard. There are a lot of things going on there. It hadn't been uh, leased out to, uh, through the years. One family's owned it a long time, so there's a lot of uh, work there. But realize that all of these places that, that we're going to show you are different stages. They're in different uh, lands in Texas. And like this with the granite rocks uh, and all of the um, sand over there that they use for fracking comes from this part of the country. It's over by art. Uh, and these people just have a wonderful prairie and um, are really good stewards of it. And so uh, we want lots of plant diversity. This is over at Chapel Hill in Washington County. It's a great county for all of these uh, 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 natives. And uh, this is very carefully put together to make you realize it's your grandmother's house. <laughs> I just love to go there. <laughs> and then, of course, we want the prairies with perennials as well as the annuals. People kind of get confused on that. We want all, everything. The perennials are our backbone. And we are counting on them, and that's who we're managing and you'll see later as we get to a certain stage, the annuals are who kind of keep everything up sustainable, doing a little bit here and a little bit there, a little phosphorus here, a little potassium there, bringing up a little boron, accumulating a little zinc when they die down. If you have a living system in the soil with a microbe, then all of a sudden you get the benefit of that. It's plant available. Ah, now we're cooking. But isn't this great on a sand hill? I just love that. And this is, uh, I think this is at my place. This is a lot of eastern gone grass. Uh, and uh, that's pretty nice stuff, too. And once you get that going, uh, unless you overgraze it, it, uh, it, it, it pretty well stays with you. Now, what we're really talking about is life at ever, ever stage, ever trophic level, everywhere. We're about life. We're not killing anything. Uh, and... Uh, I don't know if any of you are birders. Any birders? Okay. <laughs> well, we have, we always manage our farm up at Granger. We do the grass fed beef. We have 500 acres there, and it has the river bottom too. And so we always leave it in different stages for the different birds that come. And the Audubon Society comes Christmas, does the Christmas count. Well, this is, uh, uh, and I keep telling them, we can do this without economic harm or cost. We can set these things up so everybody sits. Because one of my goals at my farm is that I want everything, everything that flies over, crawls over, scoots over, runs over, walks over, anything there, I want to feed them. 
I want everybody to come to the table. I'm interested in feeding not just me and my grandchildren and everybody, my children too, but <laughs> sometimes that I, get, I leave them out. <laughs> uh, but it, it is something we're trying to intentionally do. And up here, I'm, I'm going to push this and hope nothing happens. And here is an old prairie plant, uh, the uh, selectable, I think it's called. But look at here, I've got clover, I've got everything. That's a perfect ecosystem for a grazing system. May not be what you want for a prairie, but it's what we're trying to set up. Lots is going on there. And when um, you go out early in the morning, if you have life in the soil, you'll see on the cow's poop where it, there's white strands on it, sticking up about like that, like a marine with a bird cut. <laughs> and you'll say, oh my. Well, before I got into this, I would, if I'd seen that, I would have called the county entomologist and said, Larry, we've got a spray today. There's something growing here that I've never seen before. But all it is is fungi coming up, taking down all of the nutrients back into the soil, and we've got the dung beetles working, we've got everybody working. And of course, we've got all of our uh, microscopes. We use a lot of microscope work. This is some, of course, organic matter, but we have a lot of protozoa in there. There's not any fungi in that particular picture, but we do have a little lab there and do a lot of that stuff. And of course, we always, uh, I went to this place we've been working on, and she said, are frogs good? And I said, yeah. <laughs> and she said, well, let me show you. I was kind of worried. She walked along thousands of them jumping out. Good. And then an old catfish or bat, somebody else bigger in there went, no. <laughs> jumped out of there. And I said, this is good. And she said, well, it's been kind of fun. And so we're setting up a system for everybody, everybody to have a piece of it. And of course, this is Sherry. This is out in our West Texas place where I grew up. And that was my background. But I was telling you about this bird. That is the first time it's ever seen in America. It's the Mexican white sparrow. And it caused a great deal of concern and viewing. People from all the United States came, and our road was, river road was just littered with people. And of course, the neighbors said, how can you stand that? And I said, well, I kind of like it. You know, at the time. And uh, uh, others would say, Betsy, we see those birds all the time. They're over on our place, but don't tell. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, uh, we want to. This is kind of what we're trying to set up on these places. So it's a journey, but I have to tell you, it is so connected. We have a tendency to look at just one piece of this and say, "This is the most important thing. I can do this." But really, it's this old plant that is the performer. And we're just setting the stage and pulling in all of the sub-actors and actresses to help it perform and pull the, calcium, uh, the carbon out of the atmosphere, put it down into the soil where it belongs. Big problem now. Too much carbon in the atmosphere, it came from the ground. That's what we do. Let's put that sucker back down there. We can do that with natives in these things. And the water. Too much water out there running around. Put it back in the land. That's what we're doing. This plant can do, and the insects are one of the biggest helpers there is. There's only 5%, I think, of insects that are bad or pests, and they actually have a purpose. But actually, the 95% are really good guys. They're moving nutrients around. They're redistributing nutrients. They are eating each other, they're in controlling prayer to prey relationship. It is fascinating when you st stop looking at, I'm gonna kill that. You start asking, why is that happening here? Who is contributing? Well, everyone is contributing, even you and me. We've got to take a better stance on this and our involvement and be more responsible for all of these players. We've got the soil in it, the soil is important, the topsoil and the humus, the soil biology, the photosynthesis, the atmosphere, everything working together. And these old, um, uh, this old um, little bud and uh, those flowers, 
That's the ticket. That's the ticket to make it all go around. And we hardly ever talk about the real value. We talk about the beauty. We talk about how nice it is, the habitat. But we rarely ever really talk about what's really going on. And this means you can breathe easy. You can drink the cleaner water. And you can uh, have a little clearer mind. And your cattle can eat this kind of stuff. And you can have nutrient dense grass fed beef. That's what I do. <laughs> So all of these things are, are connected. It's a journey. Now I want to show this just because a lot of y'all are working in, in, the, in the field. And really, it's a journey, and what do you do? How do you do this? What are you looking at? And so um, we always are going to start out by putting uh, more biology in, back in the soil, and try to beef that up, because it's not there usually hardly at all. And then one, the next step up here is we're going to put some long-term and short-term food out for them. Just little nibbles. Just snack pack farming, I call it. Take it long till they get kind of integrated and get to working and everything. But where I find you, your place, on this journey tells me how I have to treat it. And if you're down here where there is no life in the soil, you're going to have a lot of giant ragweed, aren't you? <laughs> and by golly, it's going to break up compaction. And it's going to be there. And, when it, and the gift of all of those big old plants that you say, why can't I get past them? They're just, they're not there just so Monsanto can kill them. <laughs> <laughs> they are sending that root down, breaking up the hard pan that you so carelessly left and that I did by overgrazing, those kind of things. And they're also massive amounts of biomaterial. Now we know the mycorrhizae fungi that you've heard of can build the humus faster than the organic material. But this is a key to tell me why, and I look at the plant to see, I know what plants are doing what and where they're playing in here. But right down here, I'm gonna have the big weeds. Once I get kind of up in here, they're wildflowers. <laughs> <laughs> perception in it. Just no perception. And so everybody's doing something. We look at weeds as telling us what's wrong what are, with us, our management practices, what we need to do to cure the, to help the soil grow, uh, uh, clean up the soil and fix it so it's going to grow uh, the good plants. So everybody's made a contribution. Once we get up here, heck, we can make lots of mistakes. <laughs> you know, if you have a really vibrant uh, prairie with good soil organic matter on it, and a good fungal bacteria ratio, at least the one to one, and that's uh, with a whole lot of dyes in there, then you're okay. You know, you could overgraze once. You could plant the wrong thing if you want to, but we don't even plant anymore. We just manage by putting the right ratio out there and let them come what's in that soil. And you know, we're told that the seeds don't last 34 years at most. Yeah, they do. <laughs> You're gonna see some things. And it gets interesting on these, some of these projects is the people will say, well, what is that? Well, that's a, a lagoon. Well, that's not in the seed list. You need to pull that. You need to kill that. <laughs> well, no, no, we really want that. That's better than what we can buy. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, everybody doesn't have the same uh, viewpoint of all of this. So this is really one of our big guides that we use when I come in and assess places. If I, I'm looking at Harris County or uh, flood control or whatever, I'm looking, this is very degraded. You get a, a big disturbance, you go back down. And so it, it, you have to kind of build up. And that, that's a process. So it depends on where we start here. Now, let the weeds help. What are these? Dandelions. My gosh, what should I do? As a, as a yard owner in Houston, Texas, if you saw that, you'd say, oh my gosh, we need calcium, we need, we need nitrogen, go down and buy it. They kill this stuff. And here they were, helping me. Now, so I take this field because these dandelions are here and I know what they're doing and I know where they are on the fungal bacteria ratio. I'm saying, okay, I got a pretty good situation here. I'm moving, I'm moving up the ladder. So I just need to, to respond and to buck that on up 
with what, with how I'm treating it with my compost tea or extract and my, and my dry manure, that sort of thing. So if I had one or two out here, I wouldn't get too excited about it. I'd say, okay, you know, but this is a movement and you see fields like that. Some years we have the agalinas. We have a lot right now because it is a parasitic and it is taking out all the monocultures because it's saying, get out of the way, get out of the way. We need some other guys out here. Make room, make room, you know. And, and all of these things working together. You ever thought about it like that? Isn't it amazing? It's a community here. And it just really gets fired up. So tells me what I'm doing now and know what to do. Now, uh, this is never plowed. And this is the uh, Harris County, uh, what, well water hole over there. And we're part of some studies over there where we've been treating them. And uh, we're now doing a lot of measurement sort of thing. And uh, that's just pretty nice, isn't it? And so when I look at that, I already know that I'm up there getting pretty close to uh, some stability, and I'm getting pretty close to uh, a, a good uh, prairie uh, uh, situation. Now, what we're doing is we're going to set up the ecosystem, we're going to build diversity, we're going to set the table with the micros for what we're going to grow. That's our other big thing. And then we're going to change the cultural practice to match what we need in the prairie. Now, let's be clear about this. We're not burning. We don't, we use to, we look at burning as a tool. And most of the time it's to get rid of the woody. Well, you know what they're for? Why you have those? It's because your fungi is all inactive. You need to fire it up some. It says you have your fungi, but you need to feed it so that it's going to come be a little more active and then those woodies go away. It's ebb and flow. And, and that's what John, uh, Dr. Weaver talks about in all of his work at the University of Nebraska a long time ago. We're not plowing existing turf. And this was one of our first projects, and we were trying, they were trying to plant the big four, and that's what they wanted. What do you think about that? Does that look pretty good? This project was deemed a failure because we didn't manage the expectation because we didn't have enough sense to know that you can't do just be four and keep it that way unless you're just going to be gardening. <laughs> yeah, because you've got all this support system in, a, in big acreage that needs to be uh, working on things. All right, so we're not killing the weeds, plants, or insects. We just grit our teeth when the army worms come <laughs> and say, I know there's a reason, I know there's a reason. I'm going to see why they're doing that. And so sure enough, what they're doing is, Mama Nature says, that stuff is oxidized, your, pack, your grass is oxidized, your plants are oxidized. You, I gotta get that stuff back in the ground so I can work it and, uh, with my microbes. So how am I gonna get it there? No cow would eat it. No, you know, not even goats will eat some of that stuff. And so there you have your grasshoppers, I mean, your um, insects, your army worms are gonna come in, take care of that fall down on our hot little soils in Texas. They're full of chlorophyll. Ah, chlorophyll. We need that to kind of start healing, don't we? Okay, so now we've got all this chlorophyll dropped on the ground and we're getting rid of these leaves. Well, that might work. We have a little rain, we change our practices and things can go pretty good. But then along comes Mama Nature and she said, wait, it's not moving fast enough, send in the grasshoppers. <laughs> Let's take those son of a gun stems down. And you all see the effect of that. Just grit your teeth and see what happens. It's a healing step. It's an ecological journey. And then if that doesn't work, who does she send in in the prairie? She's going to send in the termites. <laughs> <laughs> and they will take it down. And who comes after that? The cactus. And who? what is happening in the cactus? Why is it there? It is full of calcium. Got five minutes, man. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, this is soil food web. This is the uh, first trophic level. And this will not, where photosynthesis is going on, this will not happen on that land. It's, it's just sitting there. You really got to start at a different place there. And the uh, second trophic level, is the bacteria and the fungi, and we can work with that. These first two trophic levels, we can influence a lot. We can do a lot of really good work. So, uh, and then we got our working biology, our nematodes, and, and um, uh, 
for the door. We always manage these things. I see people who manage them out of order. And um, uh, this is kind of what they all do. <laughs> Real quick. Y'all saw that, didn't you? <laughs> And this is, says, if I'm going to have weeds, I know uh, these Johnson grass and these high, uh, high nitrates and the lack of energy, I know, and this is where Johnson grass and all your grassy weeds and your grass birds and your KR blue stem, all those guys kind of work. I know my fungal bacteria ratio of biomass is going to be like a very low. And then if I have a lot of Bermuda and Bromus and some early grasses, I know my fungi is increasing some. When I go up here to my mid grasses and my clovers and if I'm doing vegetables and all, rye grasses are in here, I'm going to have almost, if I had two little cups, I'd be three-fourths full of fungi, but my bacteria cup would be full. Bacteria is going to hang on no matter what. It's the fungi that's the holy grail that you have to put back in the system and support and protect. If I'm going to do late successional grasses and row crops and native plants, I'm going to go for a one-to-one. -one. And I'm going to also have more natives up here. I'm going to have these bushes and vines uh, up here with a two-to-one. And then, of course, in decisions trees, if we do a lot of orchards, and um, so on around. So this is the key to what I'm trying to mix with my compost and my compost teas to affect and go with what I'm trying to do based upon where I want to go. So it's another way to say it. If you have weeds, you're just going to have a few saturate fungi. Those are the decomposers, but you're going to be mainly bacteria, what you call weeds. All right. And then if I have a long garden, I'm going to have start a little mycorrhizae, less bacteria, but about the same amount of fungi, or saturate fungi. And then if I am on a prairie, aha, I've got change here. You see, these are not agriculture lands and they're not gardens and all the research and all the conversations that we hear from all the experts and our, a lot of them are treating everything as the same and they're not you do not want to buy, fire up your prairie like you would be like putting a kid eighth grade kid on steroids it's too fast it is a slower process and it is more diverse and it needs more input for a slow it's kind of slow food that's kind of the time of doing it so this is the picture of that. This is the complex of everything. But look here. <laughs> Here's what I wanted you to get. Look at that. Does that look like good soil? I mean, we've got the little nodules hanging down. The biology is sucked up there. It's feeding those roots, you know. And, and they're in good ringlets. It's vibrant and everything else. And so this would be good, wouldn't it, if we take it here? But that's not what I wanted to grow. I was growing the kale, but I set the table wrong, and I can't even pick the kale, and I am a commercial farmer. It's important how we set the table for what we want to grow, and that is based upon that one right here. <coughs> this is powerful. This is the most powerful thing we have. Now, there's not a lot of money in this, knowing this, if you are a fertilizer seller. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of thing if you're going after biology. So realize that that's happening. And of course we use the compost and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we're actually a service company. We don't just talk about it. We come do it. You can do it too. You can learn how to do this. We started off growing tea. My gosh, we use an extractor now. Uh, we just recently bought the patent for those and uh, uh, trying to make them a little cheaper so we can get them out. But we're going to brew extract, which means we pull them off. Uh, we don't fire everybody up, wake everybody up like you do when you're brewing tea. And of course, this is our, we can make two to three thousand gallons of extract an hour. We have a portable unit. We were going to do a lot that to Harris County. We would bring that stuff up and work out of their pond. We can, equipment and doing this is, is very important. So, this is kind of what you need to do. This is going to really tell you real quickly. <laughs> Look here. One treatment. Tried to get all this stuff going. We did this finally. Now that's drop seed, 
may not be a wild weed rat, but we got it covered now. We got it covered with the natives. We're moving upward. Okay. Boxes. We, this is over grazed, of course. Two treatments. That's where we went. So assessing this, and this has never been plowed, we treated it. One time we just woke up the biology. The biology was there. Where the woody's coming in. They were inactive. So we just decided to wake them up. And here's what happened. Uh, it was just, it's just a guy for the type of thing. This is the testing we do with the labs and all. That was 18, uh, 13, 10 years later. And this is M.D. Anderson, one, uh, which is what we um, looked at earlier today. And this was uh, really kind of exciting. This is what that looked like oh, when they were talking about today. And they tried to plant it several times, and it just wasn't going to go. I mean, why? Uh, so how do I fix it? So we, you know, we got together and devised the plan. When my son brought this home, I thought, what is he doing? <laughs> I mean, it's fun. We like to figure out problems, and that's who calls them, the people that get stuck on things. So, uh, anyway, it's the calcium-magnesium ratio, first of all. Man too much magnesium available. She said, cut it off. <laughs> anyway, in six months, eight months, we had a prayer, almost unheard of. And it's still going. The measure is if you can keep it going. How many years can you keep it going? Are you just going to keep doing the, uh, all of the uh, So is that going to be around for a while today? Is it going to be around for the fall? I'm sorry, what? Are you going to be around today and tomorrow? Am I going to do around tomorrow? No, are, you are you going, going to be, to be here? here? I'll be around some until about after Beth talks tomorrow, okay. talking about so when she does prayers. Sorry about that. <laughs> Pretty exciting what we did to Bush. That's what Ebony and I worked on. And it's still going. <laughs> 